Veterans of Reddit, what is the most embarrassing thing that you witnessed, or that happened to you, during basic training, possibly NSW? It is around the 20th of December, and our TI decides to make a trainee sing jingle bells since he left his key necklace outside of his shirt. Big no no. This trainee had no idea as to what the words were, so as he is doing push ups he is only saying jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells. He just keeps going. Our TI lets out a primal scream of rage. Gets right up in his face and screams at him jingle all the way mother. God dang was that funny. <laughs> AF basic training. We all have jobs around the barracks. Some people are on latrine queen duty. Some people's job is to align the beds perfectly. My job was to man the utility closet and keep it neat and organized and stocked with chemicals and such for the flight to use when cleaning. It's a very small room with no ventilation. After the first two weeks of basic, I pretty much figured out what I was going to eat at every meal, and rarely deviated. Peanut butter packet, honey packed, a piece of bread, and half a banana all smashed up together in the bread, and hawked down with a glass of Gatorade. Also usually some other crap depend on the meal. Well, the fifth week of training comes along, and something terrible happens to me in the chow line at dinner. No bananas, no honey, and only the crappy white bread. So I change my meal up. I had the spaghetti and meatballs, and some other crap I'm not sure of 100%. That night on details, I'm manning the utility closet, I feel this terrible gas brewing, or what my current sergeant likes to call bubble gut. I am trying to hold in this mother of all farts until such time as I can escape the closet and unleash this beast in the latrine. Apparently my altered dinner that night did not get along well with my plumbing. I end up giving up on holding in the fart and just cut a thunderous blast with it. I didn't realize my TI was standing in the hall just outside of my range of view. He was like most TIs. Ninja silent when calm, but loud as frick when angry. Well he heard this gunshot loud fart, and before he could walk the two steps to get to the closet to yell at me for it, he could smell it too. He had his charging bull face on when he rounded the door frame to yell at me, but you could see where he hit the wall of stench. It looked like he ran into a brick wall, as he nearly lost his footing trying to back up and get away from the smell before he recovered his bearing. He starts yelling at me did you crap your freaking pants trainee? Holy mother of god, it smells like hot rotting garbage in the Texas sun mop 4. Mop 4. Everyone get your freaking gas masks on here, we have a god dang chemical attack. The other trainees start to book it towards their bunks to get their gas masks. Their guy started to try to move out. But he stares me dead in the eyes and says not you the trainee. You get to sit in there and stew in it. Yes sir I replied. After the details were done he made me go check to see if I actually crap my pants in the bathroom. Then told me that I had to stay in the closet until the smell went away. I stayed in the closet for nearly an hour after the details were finished in gas masks. He would stop by every 5 minutes or so and pop off his gas mask to see if it still smelled. He called me the fart monitor for the remainder of basic, and any time he smelled a fart he'd ask me if I was crop dusting. Several weeks into training we were getting ready to go to the gas chamber the next day. We got issued our gas masks, and then everyone hits the showers. All of a sudden one of the guys whose bunk is near the latrines starts beatboxing the standard techno bass line. Untis untis untis. Out prances one of our class clowns. Wearing only his gas mask. Like a banana hammock. Everyone starts dying of laughter until our drill sergeant walks in. Already pee off that we are being loud. Shut up. Toe the line. Oh what the frick. You know that is going on your face in a couple hours right? So he smokes the dog crap out of us. And the dude had to keep the gas mask on. Getting it nice and sweaty for the next day. Dude, your camp sounds awful familiar to something. Comma go to the gas chamber. Everyone hits the showers. We had a guy who was sick and on bed rest for a couple days. The rest of the company was in the quad area doing weapons maintenance. One of the drill sergeants walked in the bay to grab something from the office. I guess out of pure instinct the sick guy saw him come in and shouted at ease and jumped to his feet. Problem was he was fapping at the time. What followed is possibly one of the most impressive smokings I've ever seen. My husband told me a hilarious story about when he was in. There was this kid at mistrimming a long butt piece of thread off his uniform. 
like 3-4 inches long. The drill instructor forced him to trim the thread, and keep it as a pet for the remainder of basic training. He had to have it with him at all times. He had to name it, named it Fred. Occasionally there would be a random person around, and the drill instructor would call him out and make the kid explain who Fred was. It went something like this. Fred is my pet, sir. I have to water him every day, sir. The instructor made the kid show the stranger how he watered his pet, which involved making the kid unscrew the cap to his canteen, filling up the cap with water, and dunking Fred in the water for a few seconds. He had to keep Fred in his pocket all the time. If he was caught without it, he would be punished. TL. DR. Kid had to keep a long thread he forgot to trim all through basic training. He had to water it. His first week of training, one of those soft-spoken, scarecrow-looking guys who was well over 6 feet tall, while being yelled at by a short bulldog of a female drill instructor, 5 feet tall, with shoulders as wide as she was tall, pee himself in genuine fear. Nobody blamed him though, because when that woman said things like I'm going to eat your face and crap IT back onto your skull, you dang sure believed she would. Married guy and married girl, though not married to each other, got caught fricking in a dumpster behind the mess hall. Careers and marriages ended, knee deep in rotting food. One guy marched like a puppet, when his right foot went forward, so did his right arm, and vice versa. He could never figure out how to march properly during the entirety of basic. Our drill instructor intentionally tripped him before the final parade march and when he fell, Another instructor picked him up and escorted him off the parade grounds to the hospital to check for injury. After a field exercise, we were all sitting around in the dirt eating MREs while the Cardo were explaining covering fire and positioning. When one guy next to me suddenly got a panic look on his face and ran off into the woods as fast as he could, slapping his legs frantically. When the instructor flipped out asking what in the holy, all loving frick he though he was doing, the guy screamed back fire ants in my pants or without ever looking back. The sequence of emotions on the instructor's face went from rage to pity to unabashed amusement and back to stoic faster than you can blink. Also, the group of guys I went through basic with had odd names that made for comedic gold when the instructors would yell at them. Some of the best names were queer, buttery, junk, and wiener. Sadly none of them got into trouble simultaneously. I've got two stories. One guy was in formation and decided to start watching planes fly over. He kept leaning back and looking around at the flight patterns so the instructors pulled him out of formation and yelled at him for a bit. They made him spin in a circle like a radar antenna. Point. And say there every time he saw an airplane. I was going through the chow hall when a new flight of female trainees was they were rainbows. Still in civvies and so on. One girl got stopped by RLT. Prior enlisted built like a pile of bricks. I don't know what he said to her but she flipped out, threw her tray on the ground and started screaming at the lieutenant. She was gesturing wildly when he told her to stow it and go outside or she'd be very sad. So she spits on him and takes a swing the other instructors pull her down and start getting people the heck out of the chow hall. As my flight forms up and waits for our instructor, who was still inside, a K9 unit shows up from security forces. The cop comes out goes inside, comes out with the girl handcuffed, she's flailing, screaming, and basically going insane, so she kicks his dog, as hard as she can I heard the thump from 40 feet away, so the dog bites her on the calf, we had some lectures after that one about people trying to go crazy to get out of basic, and not to try it, one guy was in formation and decided to start watching planes fly over. He kept leaning back and looking around at the flight patterns so the instructors pulled him out of formation and yelled at him for a bit. They made him spin in a circle like a radar antenna. Point. And say there every time he saw an airplane. This is the best punishment in the whole thread. Our platoon had to take our mattresses, sheets, blankets and pillows outside to the parking area between the barracks. I can't remember what the transgression was that merited this punishment, but probably because the DI thought the racks weren't tight enough. This is in San Diego in the summer, middle of the day. We had to arrange the mattresses in ranks and columns and make them tidily. Then we all stood on line at attention, and the DI would say sweet dreams. At a million miles per hour we got under our sheets and wool blankets in the afternoon sun and yelled sweet dreams. So then good morning, recruits. Followed by good morning, sir, 
at which point we hurriedly made our racks and stood at attention. This was repeated over and over, for easily more than 10 minutes. I remember there was a handful of civilians walking by, who stopped to watch. It wasn't a Friday, which is when family members come for graduation, so I'm not sure who they were or what they were doing. Regardless, there were a couple girls among them, and I remember thinking that this was not at all in keeping with the hardcore persona that every soon-to-be marine wants to project. It was also fairly late into boot camp, at the point when recruits are no longer scared and confused, and they have a sort of Stockholm Syndrome, and the recruits and drill instructors are feeding each other in this insane, symbiotic relationship of hilarious suffering, and everyone on both sides is trying to suppress a grin and maintain their bearing. So from the point of view of those civilian 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 I remember that feeling of Stockholm Syndrome so clearly, when everyone realizes it's a game, but no one can actually admit it. Before Don't Ask Don't Tell was repealed we had a huge dude in our infantry BCT that was obviously gay. We called him Big Gay Russell. He was a super nice guy, good soldier etc, just clearly and obviously gay. He was like a cartoon character and he thought himself hilarious when towel snapping our asses while gleefully making his way to the shower announcing in his best come hither voice that it was shower time. This offended some of the more religious conservatives in our platoon and one by one they tried to fight him. Little did they know, Russell was a champion wrestler in high school. One by one they tried, and one by one they got pummeled without mercy by big gay Russell. It was hilarious. That huge dude is definitely a queer let's try to grapple with him on the ground in our underwear and try to pin him down. He'll hate that. My brother Flight got caught having naked wrestling matches in the showers when I was in basic. Another kid pee himself and marched around for 2 hours thinking no one would notice. Another guy shaved off his eyebrows the first night when the TI told him to shave all the hair off his face. They never did grow back the right way. Oh man do I have one. I was in boot camp, USMC, and we were having our big uniform inspection. I was standing there at rest with my rifle by my side, waiting to get inspected and asked random questions. All of a sudden I get the urge to sneeze and clench up to suppress it. The pressure in my head created the biggest freaking snot rocket I have ever blown. All over my face. At this point none of the DIs had seen it but it was just dripping down my face and I stood there horrified as my buddy on the other side was just looking back at me in horror. I took my opportunity when nobody was looking and wiped it away ninja style and just had to stand there with my off hand behind my back trying to dry out all the snot and hide the evidence. Looking back, the whole thing was freaking hilarious, but at the time I thought I was gonna die. Arm fell totally asleep while doing an inspection. Honestly I couldn't feel anything at all. Time came to do inspection arms. Dropping rifle onto the inspecting officer. Had to pick it up. Dropped again. One of the guys in my brother flight wet the bed. He then hid the sheets in an empty locker. He now had no bed sheets so I don't know how he thought this would fly. After about 2 days there was an inspection and the TIs were tearing their barracks apart. They discovered the pea sheets and proceeded to tear apart all the beds finding the culprit. He then had to stand outside and yell his crime at anyone who came past, proclaiming it for all to know. In basic we had this dude that had a problem crapping himself. Not like his stomach was upset, accidental wet fart crap. I mean, full on log in his drawers in the middle of the night. And, the backstory begins. Anyways, about 2 weeks into basic, we got smart. We had all the mandatory items in our lockers, folded primed and ready for inspection. In our laundry closet, we had three bags. Two for clean items we could wear, and one for dirty laundry. So, one day, laundry crew goes off to do laundry. Rest of the formation does some bulls. Can't really remember. Anyways, the laundry crew is gone for at least an hour longer than they should have been. As we formed up and the TI is hollering at us, the laundry crew walks back in front of us. Our TI hadn't realized they'd been gone or something along those lines. So, as they are marching back in front of us, the TI unloads on them. Where have you been? What have you been doing? One poor bastard tried to reply without an appropriate reporting statement. TI flips crap again, even harder. 
tells them to get to the dorm and be at attention outside his office. After about 10 minutes of typical yelling, and 5 minutes of stuttering from the trainees, he gets his answer. They went to do laundry, and would typically rewash some clean laundry so they could get some extra time to just chill out and be away from the TIs. As they pulled out the clean whites to rewash, they discovered some tighty watties with a full on, 6 inches log crap in them. So, they of course threw them out and rewashed everything. TI sent them back down to the laundry room with gloves, tongs, and a freezer bag to retrieve said crappy undies. The kid who had the problem crapping never thought about his laundry mark, the identification mark in every piece of clothing. Needless to say, he was washed back to another flight, and this happened two more times before they finally just kicked him out. And no, the kid did not want to get out. He had a brand new, fresh military tattoo in celebration of joining and getting through basic. He just couldn't stop crapping himself when he slept. TL. DR. Kid shoots himself out of the military. I had to escort a mentally ill person from my flight to the hospital and walk back, by myself. When I got back to the barracks everyone was gone. I sat by the door for like 3 hours waiting when someone from my brother flight said my flight was at the dining hall which ours was far away, so I walked all the way over there and they weren't anywhere to be found so I waited there for like an hour and then went back to the barracks, turns out they thought I ran away and they were all looking for me, they eventually came back and found me and my TI told me to stand downstairs and wait for him, but soon after every TI from the 321st training squadron was screaming at me for like an hour, didn't really bother me was just annoying, they all left and just my TI was there, he went over to this field next to our squadron, picked up 5 rocks, and said there are 5 rocks here with the numbers 1 5 written on them, find them and threw them all. So here I am at like 9 at night searching for rocks with my Lachlan laser. I checked every dang rock in that field all night while my dorm chief was standing there watching me. Like 10 hours later I am still out there searching and I find a pen, but no dang rocks with numbers on them. So I write 1-5 on some random rocks and take them up to my dorm. Report into my TI and set the rocks on his desk. He picks them up one by one and examines them very carefully. Then says whose rocks are these. These aren't my rocks. All I can think is holy crap I'm busted. Do I figured I would lie a little more and say yes sir. These are your rocks. He calmly stands up sets the rocks on the table and says no. They aren't. My rocks didn't have numbers on them. Go to bed. I hope you learned your lesson. TL. DR. My TI was a dong. Should have told him that you wrote the numbers for him, since you saw that he had forgotten. First night, actually early AM, when we arrived, the TIs start going up a shit on everyone, trying to scare the bejesus out of us. In the process they were going though everyone's belongings, confiscating anything they consider to be contraband. They give it back when you leave. A couple of memorable ones. One guy had a box of condoms in his bag. The TI started raging on him. Didn't you realize this was an all boys school? You did didn't you? What are you some kind of F? Are you planning on sneaking around and trying to frick all these guys in the butt? Well, when the TI came around to another guy's bag, he found the guy had broad swim trunks, a mask, swim fins, and a snorkel. Where did you think you were going when you packed? Club Med. You must have got on the wrong freaking bus then he ordered the guy to put on all the stuff, swim fins included, and walk around the barracks for about 15-20 minutes going, quack, quack. Those guys got a lot of ribbing the first few days, but we soon learned that all of us were going to get the same treatment at one point. TL. DR. Condoms and quackers. Sir. The condoms are for your protection. Sir. In basic, we had this guy from the barrio in LA. Real hardcore Latino gangsta type. Guy was a moron, and all the brown rounds were giving him crap for being bad butt. So, we are in the gas chamber, and the drill there was you'd take your promise goff, do 10 push ups, and head out into the wind. Well, the DI yells break your seal and assume the position. 19 guys dropped a front leaning rest, and barrio guy, yep, turns around and puts his hands on the wall, all hood of cop car style. I'd never laughed hysterically while throwing up before, but I did that day. Before someone mistakes brown rounds a racial slur because of the Latino gangster in this story. Brown rounds is a term for drill instructors because of your wide round brimmed brown hats. 
Marine Corps here. One of our drill instructors yelled himself hoarse and had to be reassigned. His replacement came into the barracks and had the entire platoon stand on line. He ordered us to take off our blouses. So we took our blouses off. Then he told us to take our boots and socks off. So we did. Then off came the pants. Then our shirts. At this point we're standing in just our skivvy underwear and wondering WTF is going on. Finally, he ordered us to take our underwear off and you could just feel the awkwardness in the air. Talk about uncomfortable. We were all standing there completely naked on either side of the squad bay trying not to look down at the junk of the guy across from us. He then proceeded to call us to attention, had us do a right face, and marched our naked asses around the squad bay for the next few minutes. He was making jokes about how we needed to get our elbows to asses close, like we were accustomed to hearing for drill instruction. Finally, the senior drill instructor comes out of his hut and sees how the new DI is marching the entire platoon naked throughout the squad bay and yells, DI name, what in the frick are you doing? Get the frick over here right the motherfucking frick now without waiting for an answer. The senior DI orders us to put our clothes back on before pushing the new DI into his office hut. As we're getting dressed, we can hear the senior DI verbally ripping the replacement DI a new butthole, asking him WTF his problem was? Did he enjoy looking at naked boys etc? ILMAO about it now, but that was probably the most embarrassing experience of my life. I guess the senior DI didn't report the incident to the company CO because that DI stayed with us for the remainder of boot camp. I guess he didn't know that being a DI doesn't mean cruel for the sake of cruel. When I went to marine boot camp there's a part about a week and where the DIs come around and you need to claim all the tattoos and piercings you have had. Then they write it down so it's documented in your file. You stand there in your drawer so he can verify and write it down. When the DI gets to me he looks my heavily tattooed body over and asks what tattoos and piercings I have had. Starting with the tattoos. I rattle off all the tattoos I have. He seems a little pee that he had to write so much down. Then he asked me what piercings I have had. Up until I left for boot I had a Jacob's ladder and had just taken it out a week prior. I figured full disclosure was the best. Cause if it ever came up I didn't want to be accused of getting it after I joined. So I tell him both my ears and three piercings in my dong. He stops writing and looks up at me and just starts screaming. What the frick did you just say three in your goddamn dong what the Jesus frick are you fricking moron kids doing these days why the frick would any man put metal in his fricking dong are you or f explain this bulls to me. He was flabbergasted, horrified and pee off all at the same time. For the rest of boot and the first couple years of the marines my nickname was metal dong. Then it just got shortened to metal. Not a fan of dong piercings, but being nicknamed metal is, well, pretty freaking metal. DS, black female, started running contraband checks after pass. When she got to our female bay, she found a heavily used, rolled up pad in one of the wall lockers. DS then proceeded to smoke the owner in the hallway, with the pad duct taped to her forehead, as she lectured her about being a dirty bee. We were all forced to look on for the entire half hour. Good god, that's horrendous. A private in my platoon left his locker open and when confronted said it was an accident. They emptied every toiletry on the ground onto his uniforms. My senior drill sergeant made a private and his buddy stand in the bay hallway the one who left it unlocked did a duck walk up and down the bay hall quacking then every three quacks his buddy standing at attention would yell. Who has the best insurance and he would yell. A flack every time someone passed the private at attention would have to yell please mom sir don't feed the animals. First day of BRM. Basic rifle maintenance. I am sitting next to a private that I had already determined to have been clinically brain dead. And we are learning how to break down and function check the M4 carbines. I am fairly knowledgeable with rifles. And I was very familiar with this particular weapon. So I was helping the guy at the table to my left. I was standing up. Had just function checked the 3 round burst after explaining it to the guy. And to my right. I hear a click. I look right. And I'm staring down the barrel of a real. Functional weapon that private Ray Ray had just pulled the trigger on. Instinct told me he was going to kill me. So I grabbed the rifle from his hands. Pulled it away. And without even a thought. Slammed it into the left side of his head. He hits the floor. And I realized what I had done. I was scared for my life. 
but then the DS asks my why I did it. I replied with because he killed me. I didn't get in trouble, but I felt bad for the kid. Not sure if that is what you are looking for, but I was embarrassed by my lack of restraint. Dot. Crap. I don't think I could get on you for that reaction. Dude points a rifle at your head and pulls the trigger. You whoop his butt. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.